I left DHL eight years ago approximately. And at that time we implemented service points. And I think it's worked pretty good. But still there were challenges and of course improvements and opportunities. So we will discuss today whether the challenges look the same or did logistic really improve. I'm at Klarna today. And in the same way that payment solution partners are really trying hard to work close to e-commerce merchant and boost and drive their business, I wonder, is the logistic partners doing the same? Do we see the same role in this business? I will introduce my first guest, Håkan Eriksson, PostNord. Håkan, I guess you're the reason why I entered logistics. Yeah, don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> you hired me approximately yes, 20 yes. years ago. Yeah. Uh, and now you're the CEO of Postnode. For how long have you been that? Three years. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in logistics since the end of the 80s, but uh, spent the last six years before Postnode in the travel industry, but otherwise in logistics basically. Yes. And now you've been very busy and had a bit of tough time, I would say. I was a bit worried you should come here today, so I'm happy to see you. I'm happy to be here. Yes. Uh, maybe we should just rewind uh, two weeks approximately. What happened and why did this media mm. storm mm. pop up? Sure. Sure, it's, uh, it's been quite interesting times. Uh, our logo is now very known, so that's good. Uh, we're in the biggest change in the, in the logistics and post industry forever, I think. Uh, uh, digitalization is driving a, a major uh, reduction in volumes on mail, and uh, the Nordic countries have the largest reduction. And post Nord is Sweden and Denmark post and Nordic logistics. And uh, if you look at Denmark, for example, 85% of the letters are basically di digitalized. So if you compare 10 years ago, so we have 15% left. In Sweden, it's about 50% of the, of the overnight letter is digitalized. So we have to make a huge change. At the same time, we build the organization to be a truly Nordic logistics and e-commerce driven organization. And we're really there. So. But uh, we combine letters and uh, logistics as much as possible. So we, in a major change, and to be able to cope with the decline in the letter, we had to make a lot of changes, especially last year, where we uh, started to sort things more by machine, etc. And we did have problems last year, um, and uh, still we, we are not completely satisfied with our service today either. But especially last year we had uh, service issues, and those service issues sort of uh, exploded in the, in the media today. Mm. I'm happy to say that our service level today is actually pretty good. But as long as not all clients or not all people are happy, then we're not happy. So we continue to work with our everyday service. Mm -hmm. So uh, you've been a lot, you have had a lot of questions in media and they interviewed you. But if we then go in very concrete, how, what actions have you taken to really improve your service? Yeah, uh, if you start with logistics, we had a lot of criticism about our drivers not dropping off parcels. Uh, you've seen a driver somewhere and you were supposed to get a parcel, he never called. And we had, uh, we had different products, international post products, domestic parcel products, DPD parcels. And there was different rules. So international post products, should, we should make an attempt. Nobody home we should deliver it to a service point. That's the rule in the, serv in, in the international post organization. And uh, for other, other domestic parts, Nordic parts, it's, it's up to the client. If they want us to call, they buy a service for us to call. To be honest, we should have seen this before, but uh, it doesn't make sense for the receiver. So we changed that. So now we call at anybody. As long as we have a telephone number, we call and ask, are you home? Can we make a delivery? Or would you like to pick it up at the service center? Uh, so that made a big change on the logistics side. On the, on the letter side, uh, we're doing a lot of, lot of changes on the day-to-day -day business, how we capture information, make sure that the, our sorters are updated daily rather than weekly, etc. Mm -hmm. And we launched something we call PostNord Listens, where we, we 
are working with each contact point. It could be at service point or home delivery or letters or customer call centers. And we measure how happy our clients are. We started the service points, and after three weeks, so we have a rating of 4.58 on a five mm -hmm. point scale. That's but good. what's interesting is mm -hmm. we now understand exactly what service point is not performing as it should. Mm -hmm. Before, we knew the overall, but not exactly which service point. I mean, we know it ex the same day and the same week. And we do the same thing now with home deliveries, et cetera. So th that's going to help us a lot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we also have problems, of course, we're not the only one in the letter industry. Um, there are other ones delivering letters, but everyone believes it's always us. So we sort of take the responsibility take the blame, of, of the industry, <laughs> which we don't talk about in the press, but uh, internally we need to focus on what have we actually done and what has competi competition done. So it's going really well. Uh, it will take some time before uh, complaints are going down because it's also very much pushed by the, the, the media now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really going the mm -hmm. right direction. Good. We will talk more. Please have a seat while I introduce the next guest. Johan Holgersson, bring, please. Some of you know you. You've been here already up on the stage. Sure. But shortly, who are you and where do you work? Uh, well, I'm Johan. I work at Bring. Uh, I've been in the logistics business for like 20 years, which is uh, kind of much, I think, being this young and fresh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, going for the gold watch. So, so I've been doing this since I was in, uh, studying at the university. I started my first business when I was 21. And it just continued like that. So. Okay. I was at DHL when Bring entered the stage, and I remember you, that we were a bit jealous. You know, they had those uh, fancy green, very clean uniforms and those trucks, and it was something crisp and fresh, a bit of challenger on the market. What was, was that the same spirit in the company? Were you the young ones, the startups, or yeah. what was your feeling? That was the whole uh, strategy, to, to enter a market and do something different. Uh, and a lot has happened since, uh, since then. Back then we were kind of small, we had this aggressive acquisition strategy, we bought a lot of career companies to keep that uh, entrepreneurial spirit alive. Uh, and then of course, uh, being owned by Norwegian Post uh, is a completely different uh, company today. I mean, 17,000 people, 25 billion uh, Norwegian Krons uh, mm -hmm. annual turnover. Mm -hmm. So, so we're, we've been moving from a pretty a small uh, business to a pretty big one right now. So. so if you compare, like when was this 15 years ago approximately uh, and to now, what is the most important things that you have developed? Uh, I'm very proud of that we have focused a lot on, on uh, home deliveries. I mean, um, today it's kind of easy to, to try to be competitive by looking at your competitors. Uh, our idea is more to listen to consumers and, and uh, mostly consumers actually to, to look, okay, what do they need? How can we develop home delivery? So instead of uh, putting a lot of money on developing our own uh, pickup point service, uh, instead we have put it all in home delivery. So, so I'm very proud of that, of course. Uh, I've been doing that for like 10 years now. Started out with IKEA back in 2005 and just been rolling on since. So, mm -hmm. so we have PostNode proud of the service points. They will continue to improve them and you're mm -hmm. proud of the home deliveries. That's right. This will be an interesting debate. So okay. please have a seat. Thanks so much. Now I will, I thought I would introduce DHL to you, but I'm not. I'm introducing Peter Hesslin. <laughs> I had a shock this sum summer. Peter Hesslin is leaving DHL after 25 years. Mm -hmm. What happened, Peter? 25 years. That's about what happened. It, it, it was really now or never. Um, you know, I've been with the company for a very, very long time. I've had a fantastic career. I look back at it. I'm, I'm proud. I'm happy. It, it warms me. Um, but, you know, if, if I'm ever going to do something else than work for DHL, it was now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm midlife. Um, and I had the opportunity to do so. So, so no yeah. crisis? No crisis. No. 
No crisis. You're not just with DHL, not with traveling Mayo. around right. the world and no crisis. Exactly. Crisis. That's what I'm doing now, <laughs> enjoying my life. Perfect. No, I'm, I'm, I'm still in logistics. You know, don't tell my ex-wife, but, you know, looking after kids at home, wow. <laughs> tell you. That's logis family logistics. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, I'm happy that you're here. You won't be the voice of DHL, nope. but you know a lot of DHL, of course. But maybe you can also help me to challenge these guys. I can. And be very honest when we say, Are you, is logistics good enough? Mm -hmm. What can we improve? And Absolutely. what's the next step? With pleasure. Perfect. Thank Have you. Have a seat. So, uh, <coughs> looking at development and logistics, are you good enough? Uh, and are you developing e-commerce merchants? Uh, if we look at some recent development, Håkan, you have a product called Flexi. I think that's a fairly new yes. product. Will you explain a bit what that is? Yeah, I, th I think the, the, the battle about e-commerce is going to be about the receiver. Uh, making it easy for the receiver, not, not just us making it easy, also for the merchants make it easy for the receiver, convenience. And uh, what, what we realized is that the, the receiver, they want to be able to, take, to decide how, when and where to get the delivery. So, so we're working a lot on the checkout, where we've done the checkout model that we, we offer to all the merchants to use and they can put in other companies there as well where the, the buyer already there can decide where they want to have the delivery. But we're also working on our app uh, where we let clients, receivers, decide at delivery. Uh, do you want it this time or you want it some another time? Home delivery. Do you want to pick it up at the service point? Do you want to pick up at another service point? Do you have a favorite service point? and uh, what do we want in the mailbox, etc. But what's really interesting, we're going to launch now early next year, is flex delivery, where, where uh, you can choose time, yes, but you can also choose to have it dropped off somewhere. So uh, through the app or an SMS, you give, you give us the right to drop off your parcel somewhere where you decide. It could be around the, the corner of the house, it could be in the mailbox, it could and be I on the And I could do that directly in the app? So no papers, you do directly in the app, so yes. Okay. Uh, it could be the neighbor. That's pretty good. You can give us the name of the neighbor and uh, give her a power attorney on, on the, the app. Mm -hmm. So we can drop it off there. Mm -hmm. we, we launched this in Denmark, and uh, by all the change, changes we've done, this is probably the most important one, because the first day we had 2,000 less missed deliveries, mm -hmm. which means that we don't need to take it to a service point, and they, and they don't need mm -hmm. to pick it up at service point, just drop it somewhere they want. Okay. So Giving the, the receiver choice, I think, is most important, not just for us, really for the merchant. Mm -hmm. If the merchants give the receiver a choice to sell more, mm -hmm. clearly. Johan, what do you think about these things? Flexi and an app? Yeah, well, I, I mean, Flex Delivery, we have a similar service. We have that for years now. I mean, Flex, uh, that tells me two things. Uh, first of all, we need to think about uh, naming our products <laughs> since it's kind of similar. Uh, the second one is, I think it's kind of backwards to start developing a service that should prevent or add something to a bad service. Uh, instead, we should focus on uh, focus more like on home deliveries when people actually are home. Because uh, this service is like developed because home deliveries mainly in Denmark in this case is during daytime when no one is home. So, so, so more focus on evening deliveries, more focus on shorter uh, time delivery frames. Uh, and stuff like so that. how about your service? You do have service points. We do. But is that off now? So you're fo fully focused on uh, home deliveries? No, we, uh, in Sweden, if we take that as an example, we use DHL service points and that is uh, a strategic choice from our side. We really uh, need that network as well, but we need to focus on home delivery. Right now, we think that uh, we're going to see a switch. Uh, if we look at uh, the ratio between the amount of parcels moving through uh, service points versus home delivery, I think it's like 90% versus 10%. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see a switch here. Uh, maybe in a couple of years, it's going to be uh, the reversed uh, numbers. 10% service points, 90% home delivery. So you really have to build the foundation for the home del delivery system. Mm -hmm. just, just a clarification. Well, flex delivery is <coughs> one part of flex delivery is you can drop it off when you're not home. Then you can choose time windows, etc. So you will have all the home delivery options. And, and we probably do 
we do much more home deliveries than anybody else through our bar of today. There are small parcels, which will be branded small parcels, uh, my pack small in the future, mm. goes indirectly to the mailbox. But uh, we also see the convenience of being able to choose a home delivery. Of course, it's really important, and it's going to be even the e evening deliveries as well. So, yeah. But it's all about choice. It is. It is. Yeah. Still, the growth will not be within the small range. The growth will be uh, bigger goods, larger goods, and that's a uh, completely different ballgame. Working in a large, all of you uh, is working in large organization, and to get this drive with performance, I know DHL. How do you work with performance to every single driver or the sort of parcel, the ones that are sorting the goods? Do they, are they measured on performance, well, or I, how do you build I, that? I, I, I think it's the same within all of these big companies. You know, you, you, you need to measure what you do. If you don't measure what you do, if you don't measure what individuals do, you can never provide feedback. Um, and you know, how do, how do you know if you're good or bad? I mean, there, there's numbers and there's statistics for absolutely everything, and I would imagine that's the same across, you know, but does all, the all of these companies and Schenker and everyone goods, else. Do they get the feedback? How good was I yesterday? Absolutely. Is it the same with you? Yeah, we, we installed a team-based model in the last two years. Uh, we have something like 800 teams. Uh, they meet every morning, go through the result from yesterday, quality from yesterday, and, and, and whatever needs to be changed during the day. So that's, uh, that's the most obvious direct feedback line. And, and you look at statistics, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. In our rig, we, uh, we focus on NPS, net promoter score. So every time we do a home delivery, uh, a couple of sec seconds after, we send an SMS and we ask, how likely is it for you to recommend this service to a friend or, or, or so? Uh, I think that scale is like from zero to six. If we get a score that's lower than four, next day we call this person and ask, okay, what was good, what was bad, what can we learn, what can we do? And then we give the direct feedback to the driver. So that's, uh, I think that's the only way to, to leverage the difference between uh, KPI kind of measuring versus the experiential part of it. So, so what the customers uh, and consumers say, that's, uh, that's key. Mm. Uh, I agree. You're absolutely right. And that's why we do this post noon list now, where we measure all the points. We will do the same thing with an SMS or through the app. It's absolutely the best way to do it, to mm. follow up the action. So they see it. directly yeah. how good am I or my service point. Yeah. Mm. If I compare with payment solutions, and Klarna has a checkout, and there are several checkouts, uh, this is this development that you're seeing towards the e-commerce merchant, what do you see happening there? You, when you're out a lot talking about trends, uh, is the merchant doing what they can do on this, or where do you see the potential? Well, I'm not going to sit up here and say that the merchants uh, are not doing what they can. They are. But I think that the point is that the logistical revolution is a bit later in the Nordics than it's been on other markets. Look at uh, Great Britain uh, or England, or uh, where e-commerce is about 25% of uh, commerce in general. That ha has to do with that starting point is home deliveries and service points. Uh, I think Norway and Sweden is the only, the only two countries in Europe, actually, where the service points are bigger volume-wise uh, versus home deliveries. So mm -hmm. That's going to change. Good. Because we also see a lot of new players, but B, Urbit, Ship Wallet. How do you look upon these? What do you say, Peter? No, but I, I, I think are they I, a threat? No, I don't think they're a threat. I think they're a complement to what we're doing, um, or, or, or the whole logistics industry. I mean, it's, um, there, there's a lot of, of deliveries that are to be done, not only on a daily basis, within very small time frames. Um, lo looking at all the big integrators, you know, used to drive a truckload of TVs to MediaMarkt, who was here earlier today, or to Onoff, or to whatever they were called in the past. Today, that's not a hundred televisions being delivered to, to one retail store anymore. It's a hundred televisions being delivered to a hundred individual addresses mm -hmm. um, at, um, within that same time frame, or even a more narrow time frame, since we don't want that parcel delivered between nine and five. We want it delivered between five and nine, and rather Monday through Thursday, and don't bother me in the weekends. And, and I think to, to fill that need from a logistical capacity perspective, um, you know, I, in any role I would carry, I'd say it's a welcome compliment. And there's nothing that says that, you know, the, the Post Nords and the Brings or the DHLs or the Shankers can't work together with them actually to create better value for the end consumer. 
But don't you think still e-commerce has been here for 10 years? It's isn't it a bit you have did you wake up no, now? No, but I think e-commerce uh, uh, no, I, I don't think anyone woke up today and and what what's happening with e-commerce and what's making it more complex is 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 like you were into, you know, it, it's not the parcels that are growing now. It's the fridges, the sofas, the big right. stuff. And, you know, these things can't be dropped off to a service point. And all of a sudden, you know, your, your logistics is, is, is really being challenged, you know. And all of a sudden, you need to put that capacity onto a number of more stops every day and delivering this to a consumer. And then you get the, the, the consequential stuff of that as well. Like, you know, well, you can't just, you know, or a consumer doesn't expect you to just drop that sofa on the sidewalk. They expect you to carry it in with you, you know. If that was bought or not, that's a completely different thing. But you know, it, it is getting so much more complex. I think the parcel side, when that started within e-commerce 10, 15, 20 years ago, that was easy peasy compared to what we're meeting now with the demand of the big white goods and furniture deliveries. That's right. That's right. I don't think the industry woke up now, but we, yeah. sti we are still waking up, and that's all of us. Because uh, mm. there's such a trend shift. Logistics uh, used to be really important to know what, what the guy that pays your bill, uh, the merchant in this case, what they want if they're happy. Now it's so much about the receiver, the client of the client, and uh, I think the industry is, is still learning on how to really work with the client's client mm. in a way that our client wants as well to help our client to make it easy for their clients to buy their services. And um, uh, yeah, the industry is changing faster than ever, but uh, to be honest, we could have changed faster 10 years ago as well. And I, and I, and I get that probably I'm going to be the guy who's known for stepping on stage and saying the word home, word home delivery 600 times. But, but yet again, <laughs> you really need to understand that if, if you buy something online, you have this nice, smooth, nice word by the way, smooth digital journey, and then suddenly you have to do the last mile yourself because you have to go to that convenience store and line up and wait for your parcel and pick it up and walk home. So you really, really need to stretch the customer journey and make it smooth all the way. The only way to do that, yet again, is to focus on the home delivery. Uh -huh. Mm. I disagree. You've you got to give the client choice. Mm. You can't push home delivery to everyone. You've got to give them choice. That's right. And that's, that's the trick, to give them choice for whatever is best for the specific delivery and, and not just by having the best ID. <laughs> so uh, it's all about making choice. If, if and home delivery is going to increase, I agree. That's right, that's right. And I agree as well. If you look at uh, apotea.se, for example, and the checkout there, you have uh, six or seven, uh, maybe eight or nine by yeah. now, uh, delivery options. And that's, that's the way to go. Yeah. But still, uh, you have to have a bigger part of the volume uh, traveling in through the home delivery system just to make it smoother. So that's my point. When we presented on the NES homepage that we will hold this debate, we got a lot of emails and questions. And then when we asked, can we use this? Some of the merchant was a bit worried because, ah, maybe this is delicate. May no, don't use my name. You can use my, um, yeah, the example, but not mine, because I'm very, I'm a bit afraid of my contract. And this was really, and I approached you yeah. about this and said, is this really the style of business you have? Definitely. We were so concerned about our clients not being happy about us. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we really, and I actually brought this back to my organization, and, and we really didn't understand. We didn't, don't see that. And that's probably a problem if you don't see that. Mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to be better to work with the individual small client than we've been before. We probably focus a bit too much on the larger to mid-sized clients. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spoke about Baby Shop, for example. Not sure if Baby Shop is here today. Are they? No? Maybe. Uh, it was a really small client one day. Uh, and uh, we managed to follow that client through, and now they're really big. And they're so you, you also got to understand that small clients can become big ones, and you got to have good solutions for the small ones that say small. So yeah. we don't recognize that, but. Uh, Anybody feels that way, let me know. <laughs> but I actually brought one yeah. merchant here today. I think we have a question from the audience. Please introduce yourself. Of course. Hello. Isn't okay. Go uh, ahead. My name is Patrick. I'm from Cool Stuff. Hi. Uh, I have a question for you, Hokan. Yeah. Uh, the question is shipping with PostNord usually goes without problems. But when issues arise, it seems like you're not willing to take responsibility. It's basically impossible to get a complaint through on a missing or defective package. 
in under a month. As you most likely understand, by the time we get a definitive answer from you, we have sent a new package to the customer and resolved the issue weeks beforehand. Mm. Why is this so difficult and time consuming from your part to handle these complaints? Yeah, that, that's a good question. And we, I know we had this discussion with you before a couple of times. And uh, uh, stop complaining. No, sorry, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no, it, we do take this serious. And uh, I, I was talking about post known listeners, the post known listener. We're going to start measuring all the part, all the cut points, also, um, uh, also customer service complaints, uh, booking, etc., uh, where we more measure the perceived service rather than the physical service. We don't measure just the KPI, we really measure the perceived. Um, and by that, we will try to be more accurate in improving our services. Uh, I know it's been taking too long to get a re uh, reclamation through, but uh, it's not intentional, I promise you that. We want to so solve this as soon as possi possible. So, I guess you have more to do because you're not happy. Um, but uh, generally, I don't think we recognize this generally, but as long as you say it, it's, it's probably true. <laughs> Thank you very much, cool stuff. And then I think it's clear you would like the merchant to raise their voice. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Let's see, I will get some support here. We will do a bit of quick questions. Um, and now you look a bit concerned, and I think you should be. Uh, it was planned that we should have a bit of yes and no questions. Uh, and, but then we had some creative backstage <laughs> staff here. Oh, uh, <laughs> so it's an Is this what it looks like? Uh, it might be. Okay. It's your imagination. A happy poo? A happy poo. Okay. <laughs> and then you have this heart uh, looking. That's when I look at you, Maria, yeah? Maybe. Okay. And then you have a not so happy. So I'll ask some short questions and then you have a choice what you will answer. So, who of you have a performance of 97% day one delivery? Happy? Happy? DHL? Happy. Good. Are you satisfied with the, your current quality? <laughs> At least. <laughs> <laughs> DHL, are they happy? Yes and no. What do you mean? I mean, in, if you're in any competitive business, you can not really be satisfied with 95.6 or 99.8. You have to be aiming for 100%. So that is why I, I, I used the, this fine one. But then again, uh, reaching the, the global benchmark, which we do, all of us do, I guess. Uh, so <laughs> that's why I put this one up. So. Yeah, if, if, if you would put Sweden up, I, I'd say, in the delivery performance of all the big integrators in Sweden, it, it would be this big time. Um, comparing it to any European standard. Yeah. But as I said before, it's not so much about the percentage, it's about the perceived service. Yeah. So um, that's why I'm not happy, because we need to have the perceived service being, being 100%. Mm, good. Uh, do you have concrete actions on how to improve your quality? Yes? Good. If you were a merchant, would you be worried for Christmas? How do you say no? <laughs> And what does it mean? No. No, no. not worry. No. You're is taken care of? I think you should worry. You sh we should be worried. Yeah. Now you're here. Talk to you one afterwards. DHL? I, I, I'm not going to answer that on the behalf of DHL, but I, I don't think... You know, if you any, were a merchant, I don't, I, I don't, are you if worried? If I was a merchant... Would um, you be worried? If I knew what was going on, I'd say, you know, I don't think they've ever been as prepared as they are now. You know, and, and I've seen Christmases in the past that have been um, cumbersome to get through. And, but what I've also seen is it gets better and better. Mm -hmm. Let me just elaborate on my, this uh, emoji here. What, what I mean is, um, I think last Christmas was a bit better, better than the mm. Christmas before. This Christmas, uh, the consumers will start shopping earlier. And that's a good thing. So that's going to probably be better. But from the, from the um, 
logistic point of view, I think we, we do what we can, but still, uh, I'm going to mention home deliveries again. If we keep on sending most parcels through the pickup points, that's the bottleneck here. It's much easier for us to put more vans on the streets and add more home deliveries than it is to add more pickup points. So that's, uh, that's the main problem. Yeah, yeah we see a bit of We do a combination <laughs> of all of those, of course. Uh, uh, we, we generally have about 330,000 parcels per day. In Christmas this year, we expect in those weeks before 550,000. So it's about 70% increase. So it's a huge increase. Uh, last year, we dropped from 97 to 96% uh, during December. So 1% down, but that is not really impacting. That's, that, that's overnight. Yeah. Uh, we still aim for the um, above 97%. <laughs> Yeah, but can I tell you a story? <laughs> if it's a short one. <laughs> it's a one. short one. <laughs> In Denmark last year, uh, because we have Denmark as a, we were creative. So we, we said, okay, now let's, let's work seven days a week. Great, we're going to do that this year as well. Let's do more home deliveries than they asked for. So we started doing home deliveries even when they didn't really ask for a home delivery. And that created an issue because people were seeing the presence and they're actually seeing presence that were not supposed to be for them. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to be a little bit careful. Uh, so last question. Will you be home to accept a parcel between nine and five tomorrow? Well, you know, I happen to be, you know, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, usually... Um, not. Not. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank so you. this was my last question. Thank, Thank you. you very much for Thank participating. You. Thank you.